There are lots of things to watch uh, in what will be the new Trump administration. I just want to cite one of them, and that is the relationship Trump has with Putin, uh, the Russian leader. Uh, I talked a couple of months ago to the, uh, Dan Coats, the former director of national intelligence uh, under Trump, and I said, what's going on in this relationship between Trump and Putin? And Dan Coats said, uh, it's almost, it's so close, it seems like it might be blackmail. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And is Donald Trump being influenced by Vladimir Putin? I'll tell you this, if you think it sounds far-fetched, then you haven't been paying attention. CIA Director Bill Burns said, Putin manipulates. He's professionally trained to do that. It's what he did when Trump was in office previously, and he's planning it again at plain tr uh, Trump. So there is uh, much to watch, particularly in that relationship. It's no longer just a hypothetical. This isn't some conspiracy theory, and it's not coming from the fake news media. Some of Donald Trump's own people, his insiders, his top intelligence officials have raised this question, and I'm here to tell you, it's serious. Trump has made these promises that he's going to end the war in 24 hours, mm -hmm. but he's never said how. Indeed, President-elect Trump seems willing to talk to Putin as well. Legendary journalist Bob Woodward writing in a recent book that the two men have had a number of phone calls up to seven since Trump left office. Trump reportedly gifting Putin COVID tests in the early days of the pandemic when those tests were scarce. And Trump himself has often praised his relations with the Russian president, even siding with Vladimir Putin over the U.S.'s own intelligence services after Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election. We're looking at the possibility that a sitting president, re-elected with the support of millions of Americans, could be entangled with one of our greatest adversaries. And what's even more disturbing, millions of Americans are out here celebrating this as if it's a victory. They're missing the whole damn point. Listen, I get it. A lot of people feel like the system is broken, like Washington doesn't care about them. They see Donald Trump as someone who's willing to break the rules to get things done. I understand the appeal of an outsider, I do. But let's be real here. Trump isn't about fixing the system or fighting for the little guy. I know what sacrifice looks like, and I've seen what it means to serve something bigger than yourself. But Trump, this is a guy who puts his own interests first every single time. And now he's going to be back in office with even more power. And he's got a plan that's going to shake up this country in ways that most of his supporters can't even begin to imagine. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. So let's talk about this so-called Project 2025. This isn't just some collection of policies. This is a calculated, destructive blueprint that Trump's team has put together to dismantle everything that makes America a place of opportunity and decency. We're talking about gutting Social Security, ripping apart public education, tearing down environmental protections, and shredding the safety nets that working Americans rely on. And for what? To serve the wealthy, the powerful, and those who don't give a damn about the struggles of everyday people? They're calling it a blueprint for a new America, but let's not kid ourselves. It's a blueprint for betrayal. Yeah, here's the reality. We have legendary journalists, guys like Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, ringing the alarm bells. These are men who took down Nixon. They know corruption when they see it. They've spent decades fighting for truth, exposing lies, and holding power accountable. And they're telling us that what we're facing with Trump is as bad, if not worse, than Nixon. They're warning us that Trump's return to power with his plan in his back pocket could unravel American democracy. This isn't just about party lines or policy differences. This is about the survival of our country's core values. Trump isn't just talking tough. He's on a damn mission to break everything down and build it back up in his own image. And let's get something straight about Donald Trump's relationship with Putin. This isn't just a few friendly chats between world leaders. This is a relationship that even his own director of national intelligence, Dan Coates, couldn't explain. Coates was Trump's guy, handpicked with access to every piece of intelligence there is. And even he was worried. 
Coates openly questioned if Putin had something on Donald Trump. Let me say that again. Trump's own top intelligence official thought that the president of the United States might be compromised by Russia. This isn't some fringe theory. This is the former head of the United States intelligence seeing enough red flags to question the loyalty of the man that he worked for. And yet, Trump supporters are lining up, waving their flags, believing every word out of his mouth. They think he's fighting for them, but let's look at the facts. Trump's back with a vengeance, openly saying he's out to settle scores. This isn't just a policy agenda, it's personal. He's calling the press the enemy of the people, undermining every institution that's meant to keep him in check. That's not leadership, that's a vendetta. Real leaders bring people together. They don't tear down the very foundations of democracy to serve their own grudges. But here's the kicker. This agenda, this Project 2025 nonsense, is aimed right at the people who put Donald Trump in office. When they dismantle Social Security, when they tear apart the Department of Education, when they gut environmental protections and turn their backs on working families, who's going to feel it the hardest? Not the wealthy, not the elites who bankroll these policies. No, it's going to hit the very people cheering Trump on. They're going to lose overtime pay. Their kids' school will suffer. They won't have the support systems that they need. And by the time they realize it, it'll be too late. They're rallying behind Trump like he's their champion. But what they don't see is that they're the ones who are going to pay the highest price. And let's not forget Donald Trump's behavior during COVID-19. He downplayed the virus publicly, even as he admitted privately to Bob Woodward that it was deadly serious. This was during one of the worst health crises that we faced. And Trump's response was to lie, to minimize, to leave Americans in the dark. People lost loved ones, communities were devastated, and Trump couldn't be bothered to tell the truth. That's not just incompetence, it's betrayal. And now people are lining up to put him back in charge as if nothing happened, as if those choices didn't have deadly consequences. We're at a moment where Trump is more empowered than ever, and he's got a roadmap to dismantle everything that gives Americans a fair shot. Project 2025 isn't just another policy plan. It's a complete overhaul that targets the very programs and protections that make America livable for millions. Eliminating Social Security? That's not draining the swamp. That's ripping the safety net right out from under people. Gutting the Department of Education? That's abandoning our kids' futures. And the worst part is, he's got millions of supporters who think he's doing this for them, when in reality, they're the ones who will suffer the most. I'm saying this as a former soldier, as a guy who's put his life on the line for this country. Our democracy, our freedoms, the very fabric of America is being torn apart by a man who cares about nothing but his own power. And if we don't stand up and do something, we're going to lose the country that we love. This isn't just about Trump. It's about the path he's taken us down, a path that looks a hell of a lot like the beginnings of an authoritarian state. You think the Founding Fathers fought and bled for this? For a leader who dismisses the truth, attacks the press, and divides his people? So yeah, I'm angry. I'm not here to sugarcoat it. Trump's got a vendetta, and he's ready to unleash it on anyone who doesn't bow to him. If we don't push back, if we don't stand up for what we know is right, then we've already lost. This isn't just about one man. This is about the future of America. And I'll be damned if I sit on the sidelines while this country goes down a path it may never come back from. We're at a tipping point, folks. If we let this slide, if we sit back and hope for the best, then we might as well start saying goodbye to the America that we thought we knew. It's time to wake up. The threat isn't coming. It's here. And if we don't rally together and resist this path, then we have no one to blame but ourselves when we find ourselves in the middle of a nightmare that we've been warned about for years. America deserves better, and it's up to us to make damn sure that it gets better. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.